The focus of this lesson will be on analyzing compressible gas flow through converging diverging nozzles. Also known as the D Laval nozzle, these are devices used to accelerate fluids to very high speeds. CD nozzles are commonly used in propulsion systems of supersonic aircrafts and spacecrafts and in supersonic wind tunnels. A CD nozzle is shaped such that the cross-sectional area varies with axial distance along the length of the nozzle. The shape of the CD nozzle resembles that of an hourglass. There is a minimum area section called the throat which is preceded by the converging section and succeeded by the diverging section. Using continuity and isentropic relations, we can obtain the following relation for the variation of Mach number with nozzle cross-sectional area. This equation is called the area Mach number relation. Notice the presence of a variable called A star, which is the sonic throat area. From this equation, it is clear that the Mach number at any location in the nozzle is a function of the ratio of the local duct area to the sonic throat area. Here is a plot of area Mach number relation. If you notice, there are two values of Mach numbers that will satisfy the equation at any given area ratio, a subsonic value and a supersonic value. Let us now understand a generic 1D flow through a CD nozzle. Consider a CD nozzle with very high area ratio at the inlet. The inlet station feeds from a large reservoir operating at stagnation conditions of P0, Rho0 and T0. When the ambient or back pressure at the exit of the nozzle is small enough, a supersonic flow will be established. In the converging section, the flow is always subsonic and the exact value depends on the local area ratio. At the throat, the area ratio is 1, that is, AT is equal to A star, and therefore, the flow attains a sonic velocity. This sonic flow then enters the diverging section where it is further accelerated. The variation of pressure, temperature, and Mach number through the nozzle is shown here. Notice that pressure and temperature decrease whereas Mach number increases monotonically. The variables with subscripts E refer to conditions at the exit, except for two special conditions, which we'll discuss later, the exit pressure will always be equal to back pressure. For our discussion, we will be using these two terms interchangeably and make a distinction when necessary. Let us now analyze the flow behavior at different values of pressure ratio. Here, the pressure ratio is referred to as the ratio of exit pressure to inlet total pressure. For our analysis, we will consider the setup shown here where CD nozzle is connected to a tank supplying the inlet section with air at fixed total pressure and temperature. A valve is attached to the system beyond the nozzle exit is adjusted to vary the back pressure. Initially, let us assume that the back pressure is equal to the total pressure at the inlet. At this condition, no gas flow is possible. Let us now reduce the back pressure slightly such that PB is equal to PE is equal to PEA. At this condition, a low speed flow is established inside the nozzle. As the back pressure is reduced further, the flow is accelerated more, leading to a higher Mach number throughout the nozzle with highest being at the throat. In the diverging section beyond the throat, the flow is decelerated. The acceleration of flow continues up to a back pressure, say PB is equal to PE equal to PEC, where the flow becomes sonic at the throat, that is M equal to one, and AT is equal to A star. At this value of exit pressure, the mass flow rate through the nozzle attains its maximum value. Even with any further reduction in exit pressure, the Mach number at the throat will always be one and the mass flow rate will remain constant. This situation is referred to as choked flow. For a calorically perfect gas, 
at gamma equal to 1.4. The sonic flow at throat corresponds to a throat pressure ratio that is P star over P naught of 0.5 to 8. Now if the back pressure is decreased below the value of PEC, there will not be any change in the flow characteristics in the converging section. For values of back pressure less than PEC, but greater than the design condition, which we will refer to as PB is equal to PE is equal to PED, a normal shock is formed in the diverging section of the CD nozzle. The flow in front of the shock is supersonic, while behind the shock, it is subsonic. The plots here are, show the representative pressure and Mach number distribution for the conditions where a normal shock exists in the diverging section. Before the shock, the Mach number of the flow increases in the diverging section and subsequently the pressure reduces. Beyond the shock, the flow becomes subsonic and starts decelerating as it flows past the rest of the nozzle while the pressure dramatically increases across the shock and keeps on increasing till the nozzle exit where it becomes equal to the prescribed back pressure PED. If the value of PED is closer to PEC, the normal shock is located closer to the throat of the nozzle. If PED is decreased, the shock wave moves downstream and closer to the nozzle exit. At certain value of back pressure, the shock sits exactly at the nozzle exit. At this condition, the nozzle exit pressure and back pressure will become distinct. The back pressure, say PEE, is the static pressure behind the normal shock at the design mark number of the nozzle. In this figure, PEF refers to the proper isentropic value for the design condition and it exists just upstream of the normal shock. From this point on, the nozzle exit pressure remains unchanged at PEF irrespective of the back pressure. Since we know that PEF is the design condition exit pressure, let us look at how the flow behaves for back pressure values between PEA and PEF. As soon as the back pressure is reduced below PEE, the shock wave moves out of the nozzle and the flow inside the nozzle is fully supersonic and isentropic. However, since the exit pressure PEF is still less than the back pressure, oblique shock waves are formed at the nozzle lip through which gas pressure is increased. In such a case, the nozzle is said to be overexpanded. On further reduction of exit pressure such that PB is equal to PEF, we arrive at the design condition of the nozzle. At this condition, there is a perfect supersonic expansion and no shock waves are present either inside or outside the nozzle. For this condition, the back pressure and exit pressure will match identically. Now, if the back pressure is further reduced below PEF, the nozzle is said to be underexpanded, and in order for the exit pressure PEF to be made equal to the back pressure, expansion waves are generated at the nozzle lip. Till now, we've analyzed qualitative flow behavior in the CD nozzle at different pressure ratios. It is now time to understand the overall process quantitatively. Let us begin by assuming that the flow through the nozzle is entirely isentropic. As a result, the total flow conditions can be considered constant throughout the nozzle. For a known value of exit pressure P2, the following expression can be written using isentropic relations, from which exit mark number M2 can be calculated. Using A2 and M2, we can calculate A star from the area ratio equation. This calculated A star can be compared to the actual cross-sectional area of the throat, AT. If AT is greater than A star, it indicates that the throat is too large for sonic flow and thus the entire nozzle is subsonic. If AT is less than A star, 
it indicates that the throat is too small for subsonic flow and the nozzle is choked. Let us now look at each of these conditions in more detail. When the flow is fully subsonic in the nozzle, using A star as our reference quantity, we calculate the area ratio at any location in the nozzle. From Mach number area ratio relation, we obtain the corresponding flow Mach number at this location. Knowing the total properties and the Mach number, it is straightforward to calculate all the flow properties and the mass flow rate. For the condition where throat is choked, that is AT is equal to A star, we know that the flow in the converging section is subsonic and isentropic. Hence, we can use the same procedure that we just discussed to obtain the flow properties at any location in the converging section. For the diverging section, however, things are a little different. There are two possibilities based on prescribed value of back pressure. The flow at the nozzle exit is subsonic and two, the flow at the nozzle exit is supersonic. In the case of subsonic exit flow, as discussed earlier, there must be a normal shock wave in the diverging section. For a supersonic flow at the exit, we first compute the design condition at exit Mach number using the exit area ratio A2 over A star. For this Mach number, we can compute the exit pressure, let's say P2 prime, using isentropic relation for pressure ratio. If we compare the value of P2 prime to a prescribed back pressure, we encounter two scenarios. If P2 is less than P2 prime, the flow needs further expansion in order for the exit pressure and back pressure to match, which happens outside the nozzle. This is the underexpanded condition that we previously discussed. If P2 is greater than P2 prime, there must be a normal shock in the diverging section and the flow must pass through this shock and further diffuse subsonically to the prescribed back pressure. In this case, there is one problem though. How do we determine the location of the normal shock? Well, we have to use a trial and error strategy. Let us look at this using the following flowchart. We first assume a location of the normal shock in the diverging section of the nozzle. Let us consider the location just in front of the normal shock as A and just behind the normal shock as B. Since the flow from the nozzle inlet to point A is isentropic, we know the total properties at A. From the area ratio equation, we can calculate MA using the supersonic solution. Using MA and total properties at A, we then calculate static properties at A, PA, TA and rho A. We can now use the normal shock wave relations to obtain the static properties at location B from the known values of MA and static properties at A. We can obtain the total quantities at B which will prevail throughout the remainder of the nozzle where the flow is isentropic. Using MB and the area Mach number relationship, we can calculate a new reference critical area AB star. This critical area will also prevail from downstream side of the shock to the exit. Using the exit area A2, we can calculate A2 over AB star and then obtain a provisional subsonic Mach number M2 using the area ratio equation. Finally, using the isentropic relation for total to static pressure ratio, we solve for a provisional exit pressure P2 prime. If P2 prime is greater than the prescribed exit pressure P2, the shock must be closer to the throat and the assumed axial position X is reduced and the analysis is rerun. Otherwise, we increase X and rerun the analysis. A small increment delta X is chosen for these adjustments.
That brings us to the end of this lesson.